Good afternoon, Mr. Wright. Good afternoon. Attorney Wright. Good afternoon. Um, may I approach to just see what the witness has in front of them? You may. This is 1AX, which was that the final. These are just my own little notes. This shouldn't be. These are no. These are all just my own notes. Okay. Just put this in front of you. Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Attorney Wright, on direct examination. Mm -hmm. You made reference to identifying a portion of a certain factual acknowledgement that you and your client disagreed with and bringing it to the attention of the state, correct? Yes. Well, you, you mentioned several, mm -hmm. but there was one in particular that the state changed for you, correct? Um. I need you to give me a little more info okay. on which one. And I'm not going to get into the contents of it, but it's in what's been marked 455Y. Okay. Seeing 55 for me one more time. Six. Oh, state's just handing it to me. Okay. Clear approach. Gotcha. That's what they got. It is. Ah. I believe okay. that's 455. Why? Yes. 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 Now, we're throwing a lot of numbers at the jurors. Okay. Just so we know what we're talking about. 455. Why? is not the final plea agreement with the final factual acknowledgments, correct? No. Okay. On 455Y, on factual acknowledgement number eight on that document, not the final document, but number eight on that document, isn't it true that you identified that factual acknowledgement and said that you had some problems with that factual acknowledgement? And I'm specifically the last part of it. Um, yes. Okay. Now, as the attorney in this case for Mr. Sledge, you received discovery, correct? Yes. And you were able to see what your client may have said or did not say to any police officers. Correct. Okay. And certainly you were representing your client and are aware of what your client may have said or didn't say to any district attorneys. Okay. And you're aware, you would be aware of what your client would have said to any district attorney investigators, correct? Yes. Okay. The part of factual acknowledgement number eight that you asked to be removed and the state removed it. Okay. You with me? Yes. The state removed it. We agree? Yes. Okay. That part that you asked to be removed, um, from your review of the discovery and from representing your client, your client never said such a thing, correct? I, I can say that my client never said or adopted that statement, and that was okay. one of the reasons he asked it to be removed. Okay. And, and I understand he didn't adopt it, but to your understanding, he never said it. Correct. Okay. And so, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to clarify that portion that you asked to be removed is not something that your client once said and is now disowning or saying he, he's changed his mind. It's something that was never said. Objection asked and answered twice. Oh. Um, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, I just want to talk to you about the timeline of you receiving the the plea offer in an actual pleading this case, okay? Um, you received the first version of the factual acknowledgements. You would agree at approximately 5 o'clock p.m. On, on December 27, 2022? Yes. Okay, and that was the day before the plea was entered? Correct. And as I understand, I'm not going to belabor the point, as I understand you went to 911 Rice, 901 Rice Street, uh, the Fulton County Jail, to discuss the plea offer with your client? Yes. Okay. Mr. Sledge. And do you recall how long you met with him that day? Now, that I don't know. Um, it would have been long enough to make sure we're going over things for me to get a good idea of what his response would be okay. to uh, our conversation and the things I was going over with him. And then at some point I would leave. And then, of course, as I said, later, prepare a response email to okay. the uh, state. And this meeting with your client, was this in the, you were in the attorney booth at 901 Rice Street? Yes. Okay. And as an attorney, you know, or when you met with Mr. Sledge, you were on one side of the booth there's a glass objection mm -hmm. relevance as to this. I'm discussing their ability to go over this document. Uh -oh. There's a glass, a thick glass barrier in between you and Mr. Sledge for this meeting. Correct. And he's on the other side of the thick, thick glass, correct? Correct. And of course you can, you have to talk loud, but yeah. you can hear each other, correct? Correct. And let me at least, so you know, because this is some time ago, I'm assuming I was, again, because we are almost always in the attorney booth. We get a little key, we can unlock it, we can go in. We can also hand documents back and forth. Right. Um, that is my recollection of how I met with him, which meant I would have been able to hand him a copy so he can read it, I can read it, you know, at the same time and go over whatever we need to go over. Um, I'm sort of stating it because it's so long ago. Um, is it possible that I just saw him through one of the more window only kind of things where I could not have handed him stuff? Possible. I don't remember that. I remember being in the attorney booth. Okay. But so I just wanted to point out that, yes, we can talk as well as hand stuff to each other okay. to, to review. Well, let's let the jury know what we're talking about yeah. here. So if the attorney booth if someone's in the attorney booth, if it's being used, if it's occupied, you can use a visitation booth, correct? Correct. And that also has thick glass in between you and the person you're speaking to, correct? Yes. And the only Can't the see main difference is there's no pass through in those correct. booths. Okay. Again, all audible stuff's the same, but you just can't pass stuff back and forth. Okay. And of course, when you met with him on the 27th, met with Mr. Sledge on the evening of the 27th, you had whatever version of the uh, plea agreement was in effect at that point, but not the final version. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, do you, could you refer to 1AS? Okay. For me. Great, great questioning by Shart. I have it, sir. Okay, thank Demeanor, you. Demeanor, nonverbal um, cues, you can't see. You would agree that in the negotiations with the state, your client pled to count one, which was conspiracy to commit RICO violation, correct? Yes. And he was facing 15 years to serve. I mean, excuse me. He was sentenced. The agreement was 15 years to serve on probation, correct? Correct. Okay. And then count 30, he, he did plead guilty. And according to this agreement, um, sentencing was withheld. Yes. And would be dismissed if he fulfilled the agreement. Yes. Okay. At this point, sentencing is still withheld, correct? Correct. And... The maximum he's facing on count 30 is 15 years, correct? 
Yes. Okay. So right when he testified earlier today, he had a 15-year sentence hanging over his head as well as the probation? Correct. Okay. And so his maximum exposure is 15 plus 15, correct? Yes. I mean, technically less, we'll say any time is already ticked off uh, since the agreement. But generally speaking, it's 15 plus potentially another 15. So, and at this point, um, if he's if he's done a year on probation, it would be 29 years instead of 30 years. Correct. Okay. Now, you indicated in your review of the final plea agreement, um, there was one factual acknowledgement that you testified you missed, correct? Correct. Number eight on the final agreement, you missed. Correct. Okay. And well, I'm not going to ask you to speak on behalf of your client, but you missed it. Yes, I, I can only say that I missed it. And had I seen that, I would have immediately, because it was of a certain subject that from the very beginning, we had sought to exclude from this. Um, but ultimately, uh, for whatever reason, um, we missed it. Okay. Um, can you, in sentencing... Acknowledgements number five on that final agreement, defendant sentencing acknowledgements. Yes. This final plea agreement between Mr. Sledge and the state, as reviewed by yourself and Mr. Sledge, indicates that your client is facing as much as 35 years in confinement. Isn't that correct? Correct. That's what the agreement says. Correct. Okay. In fact, he's facing 30, maybe 29. Correct. It, it would have been a max of 30. Um, I'm not, so 35 was incorrect. Okay. Um, so, Your Honor, I object to the characterization. Um, I, the language, I, I'd object to the characterization, and I don't want to speak further, but the question was, whether it said he faced 35 Department of Corrections. That is what the document indicates. Okay. Is that your client is facing 35 years? I, I think it would be a more correct statement to say 30, but well, that point is 30 or 35 a whole lot of time. Well, but yes, it, I think the correct number is 30. All right, you're making my point for me. Gotcha. Okay. You signed an agreement where your client was facing your client, you and your client signed an agreement mm -hmm. saying that your client was facing 35 years. Correct. And he was really only facing 30 or less. Objection, ask okay. and answer. Yes. Twice. Your client on that final agreement, um, there's a word that's crossed off and initialed by your client, correct? Yes. Okay, Be begin was changed to being. It's just a switching the letters, right? Yes. Okay, and that was crossed out and written and initialed by your client, correct? Correct. All right, and you've reviewed the uh, video tape. You were in here when the video was played well, of yeah. your client taking a plea. I was there. Okay. That was something that Miss Love caught and instructed Mr. Sledge to cross out an initial, correct? That sounds correct, yes. All right. That wasn't something that was caught by your client. Correct. All right. Okay. Um, Mr. Wright, you, in addition to what I first asked you, about about number eight, the portion of number eight that you pushed back on the state and they changed. You also pushed back to acknowledgement number three on the final plea agreement, correct? Correct. And
Your Honor, may I go back? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and number three, which you pushed back on, um, regarded the video that your client made with Quindaria Zachary, where he was, we'll say, threatening a gentleman by the name of Kel or Kelvin Watts, correct? Correct. Okay. And you're aware that the factual acknowledgement indicates that your client, while associated with YSL and to support and express loyalty to YSL, made this video. Correct. And it, it indicates, the acknowledgement indicates that the video was made on behalf of YSL, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. Your Honor, um, I'm going to object to characterization. Sustained. <clears throat> I mean, if you read it carefully and then rephrase. On behalf of YSL, defendant threatened to harm a person named Kel. You can ask that. Okay. But it, the acknowledgement indicates that on behalf of YSL, defendant, that would be your client, Mr. Sledge, threatened to harm a person named Kel, correct? That's what the acknowledgement says. Yes. Okay, and you pushed back on that and you sent Ms. Love an email, correct? Correct. Actually, we, we began taking issue with that characterization from the very beginning. And this was, I think I testified an example of where we felt one way, the state felt another, and that was one of the uh, examples where um, it was not changed. Right. Okay. Do you have the emails? Actually, this might be. 460 is right here. Thank you. Do you have 460 in front of you? No. Yeah. Uh, no. 462. 461. He one moment. This is the only uh, question. Ms. Love gave me this one. Uh, I'm okay. going to approach if Your Honor will allow. I'm handing you what's been marked as four seats and why. Yes. I'm going to read to you from your email what you said about acknowledgement three to Ms. Love. And this was this email was sent on December 27th at 8.43 p.m., correct? Yes. Okay, and this is the night before Mr. Sledge entered his plea, correct? Yes. Okay. You wrote regarding number three, the video may have seemed like the issue was gang related, but it was actually about a girl that Sledge was dating and Kel started kicking it with her. That was the real issue behind that. Not denying the video, but the issue was the girl. Is that what you yes. wrote? And is that verbatim? Yes, that was verbatim. Okay, so the point you were trying to get across is you're not denying it, that your client, Mr. Sledge, made the video. Correct. And you're not denying that he had an issue with Cal. Correct. But that issue was about a girl. Yes. And you, ultimately, the state was unwilling to change that factual acknowledgement in the plea agreement, correct? Correct. They were Beautiful unwilling chart. to take out that it was done on behalf of YSL. Correct. And they were unwilling. Um, Your Honor, um, I, my objection is vague when the question is they were unwilling to take out that it was done and earlier Mr. Sharp referenced the video if he could just clarify what he's saying. Sustained. Okay. They were unwilling to change the factual acknowledgments on your client's plea that he was to sign the next day, right? Well, again, some changes were made, but as to that specific one, I'm, I'm that was one example of where they were not willing 
to change it, even though we had a difference of opinion as to what it was about. So and, and, the, the it is still unclear. So and, and factual acknowledgement number three. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yes. My objection was to, could they specify what it we're talking about? And, and it may help. Factual acknowledgement number three, which relates to the video that was made. Yes. With your client and Mr. Zachary in it, correct? Yes. Okay. The state was unwilling to change the language that it was done to support and express loyalty to YSL, correct? Correct. And they were unwilling to change the language that it was done on behalf of YSL. Correct. And your honor, yes. again, I object you, to the concluded, you can clear, clear it back up on redirect or are we already? Yeah, that was, you still have redirect. redirect, so you can clear it up then. They were unwilling to change the language where it said, wherein on behalf of YSL, defendant threatened to harm a person named Kel because of that individual's association with a rival gang. They were unwilling to change all it, right? All right, I, I think that the state's objection is a valid one, and I don't know if you want to, if you need direction, um, but why don't y'all approach? Does that count as an objection because it was raised by Whitaker? <laughs> Does that count? Yeah. And are we at nine? Are we at nine objections? If I've got to get clear because I had stepped away. Um. Yeah, that was really Paige with the with the objection for real. Shout out to Dear Woke Christian. Now, this is Jason Whitaker who put in the Rule 22. You did a great, great job making it clear exactly what you were asking for with your Rule 22 motion, dear Will Christian. I loved seeing you in there. We were cheering for you in the chat. That was a good time. And on top of it, you came in here and so generously gifted five memberships. And you're green, so you're just coming in here with slime and then dropping slime on people's heads. So shout out to DWC in the chat. Super, super awesome. And, you know, I always say you guys probably already know his channel, but you never know. You never know who doesn't know. So right now, if you look at the chat, there is a link. And you can go not only support Dear Woke Christian, but you'll get a lot of return from it because tons of content, tons of YSL content, tons of Fulton County content. So if you're looking for a deeper dive into the inner workings of Fulton County, that is the channel to go to. Super, super awesome. And tons of great guests. You do a lot of good interviews too. So make sure I'm going to drop it again here because the chat is moving fast. Shout out to DWC coming in here all slimed up with the green. <laughs> and yeah, I agree. I think that was an objection for the state. I think it should count on the objection counter. We could, uh, we could know that there's a one that was a, a manual ad by us. Yeah, so we're at five sidebars. And Letitia, there is a little bit of the defense simply doesn't object as much as the state, but also I feel like Whitaker doesn't listen sometimes before she sustains the state's objections. <laughs> Okay, Attorney Wright, squeak. do you remember at this moment, in your email, you did not indicate specific changes that you wish to have made, correct? Uh, I'm going to check one and the next Actually, in my email, the way I even described what a, I put, here are recommended changes, and then I went number by number um all the way eight through th 13 for okay. the agreement i had at the time i get it, it what I, I, it's not like you went through it like you do in microsoft word and mark it with red or anything like that like an editor would correct correct okay but the 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 point you were conveying in that email was it was not gang related correct correct and it was over a girl Correct. As to that issue number three. As to number three. Okay. And 
ultimately the final version of Mr. Sledge's plea agreement includes language. You would agree that it includes language that indicates that the video and the making of the video and the threats were gang related. Correct. That number three is an example where there was not a meeting of the minds with the state. And that's where they did not remove the information, per, you know, consistent with what we were suggesting be removed. And the gang related versus a girl was where the meeting of the minds was not happening. Correct. Cor correct. I mean, ultimately, the state included sort of both things in there where we were saying it was really about the girl. Right. And you told Mr. Sledge that he could explain this later to a jury. Objection, Judge. Um, one that has answered in province of mm -hmm. um, attorney client privilege. Nothing was asked and answered. Then attorney client privilege. Okay. Mr. Wright, from your dealings with Mr. Sledge, you are aware that Mr. Sledge did not completely agree with factual acknowledgement number three. Objection asked and answered. Sustained. That was asked and answered. On the date that he pled, he did initial that factual acknowledgement, correct? Asked and answered. Your, your Honor, I'm, this is the first time I'm questioning this. I know, but lots of other people already have, and we've gotten that information at least a couple of times. That context with the date was new. I mean, you're welcome to ask whatever it is that you, you know, were leading up to. I believe on cross, you indicated that in negotiations, you can't have everything, and sometimes you have to live with some things, correct? Correct. And your client initialing number three, even though he didn't completely agree with it, is an example of having to live with things, correct? I think I previously did state that number three was an example where there wasn't a complete meeting of the minds, but his choice was to either walk away and proceed with trial or uh, or enter into the plea agreement. To go home, Mr. Sledge would have to live with that as part of the negotiations, correct? Yes, Your Honor, that part is asked and answered. And Sustained. All right, here's my question. Is it fair that Mr. Stilwell would have to live Objection, with your Honor, client? And answered. No. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that is not what I meant to add. Objection, relevance, and improper question. Is it fair that Mr. Stilwell will have to do anything is an improper question for this witness. So forgive me for- Sustain. Was Mr. Stilwell a party in these negotiations? Objection, that is, again- I'll, I'll prevent that question. Was Mr. Stilwell a party in these no. negotiations? And was it, was this- was your client signing a factual acknowledgement that wasn't true? Is that something that Mr. Stilwell should have to live Objection. with? Objection. What? Sustained. The signing, of, the signing of these incorrect factual, factual acknowledgements, you would agree that it affects more people than Objection, just Mr. Sledge, Honor. correct? Overruled. I will state this. Any person in a case where there are multiple defendants, once they enter to a plea agreement that includes certain factual stipulations, that can impact all the defendants, not just themselves. So uh, to your point that yes, when Mr. Sledge was completing his plea, his focus was on him. However, there are effects or ramifications that could affect others. And your focus was on him. Hang on just a second. Hang on, hang on. And my objection was to the characterization of the incorrect or improper factual acknowledgement. So the um, uh, answer, I think, sort of dealt with, it, but my objection was that that was a mischaracterization or improper characterization. Was factual, right. Well, was, the jury's heard the testimony, so. Was factual acknowledgement number three completely correct? 
From your client's perspective? We indicated that we took issue with some of number three. Some of it we were acknowledging and some of it we took issue. And he and he initialed it and he got to go home. Correct. Objection. That's and fantastic. it affects these other gentlemen back here, correct? Sustained. No further questions.